Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Champaign, Illinois. I'm so glad that we've gathered together for worship online today. I invite you to please visit our digital connection card at firstpres.church connection. It's essentially the equivalent of the friendship pads that we pass when we're together in person. We'd love to know that you're worshiping online, if there are ways that we can be better in touch with each other, and any prayer concerns you might have. So please do visit and fill out firstpres.church connection. Then there's a link right there to bring you right back to the video. This morning, our congregation's Compassion, Peace, and Justice team has asked that I announce an upcoming congregation-wide book study on race. The book is the best-selling book by author Robin DiAngelo, and it's called White Fragility. The subtitle is, Why Is It So Hard for White People to Talk About Race? The study will begin the week of September 14th. More information is available at firstpres.church slash bookstudy. That's firstpres.church slash bookstudy. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God Almighty. Thank you for that beautiful prelude, Leslie. Good morning. Our first hymn today is Come Behold the Feast of Heaven. Please sing with us when the slides come up on your screen. Come behold the feast of heaven. Hallelujah. As to Hear the word of God. 
Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church, Champaign, Illinois. We're glad that you have joined us from your living room, your bedroom, your, your breakfast nook, from different states, from different parts of the world. Welcome. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We want to pray this morning for the McNattons who have been behind the scenes workers uh, for many, many months now. They're at a, a relative's funeral today. So we want to lift them up in prayer, and we have other prayers for which we will lift up as well uh, later in the service. But welcome to you all. It's a privilege to be leading worship with Rachel Matthews, who will lead us in our call to worship as it will appear on a screen. Join with me in the call to worship. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. These words are from uh, Paul's letter to the church at Rome, the 12th chapter. We'll be sharing them again in a little bit in the service. Uh, We fall short of God's glory. We don't do everything that uh, Paul mentions in this uh, chapter in Rome. We don't do everything that Jesus asks us. The list is long, but can also be narrowed to this. 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the commandments are built upon these two. We don't fulfill that law very well either. It is because of God's grace that we can approach God with confidence and humility and confess our shortcomings to God. So let us confess our sins now before the throne of God's grace. Join with me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, you call us to venture where we cannot see the ending. Forgive us for not trusting you to lead us. You call us to venture by paths as yet untrodden. Forgive us for not following you. You call us to venture through perils unknown. Forgive us for allowing fear to paralyze us. Give us faith to go out with courage, not knowing where we, where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. When we lack trust in you, have mercy, holy God, and help us to be your light in the world. We ask this in Christ's holy name. Friends, the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. So be assured, I declare to you, that in Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. Mm. Hallelujah and amen.
It's our privilege to gather with Mindy and Jip again. You know, some of you adults tell me uh, actually routinely that, that Jip is the best part of the service. Um, I thought Jesus was. I am. <laughs> Jip, you're very popular. Um, but yes, the verdict is, is, is out. Um, uh, you all prefer Jip's sermons to mine, and uh, I, I'm okay with that. Really, I am. <laughs> Good morning, Jip. I'm so glad you're here. You're very popular, and we're glad that you're with us. I had no idea. <laughs> well, you know, you are just a, a friendly person, and you have lots of great questions. Well, I'm glad that people like my questions. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's going on today? What Have you thought about the service today? Have you read the scriptures that I'm going to share this morning? Um, yeah, I'm all set. I have coins in my pocket for the dues, and, and I'm looking forward to the donuts. Okay, dues and donuts. Okay, well, let's see. Um, dues and donuts. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but I'll take all of your money, and please point <laughs> me in the direction of the donuts. You mean there's no donuts? Not only are there no donuts, no. There, are, there are no dues either. I'm not sure how you came up with dues and donuts. Well, Miss Pingley said we were talking about dues and donuts today. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Dues and do nots. Dues and do nots. But that doesn't sound like dues and donuts. It doesn't. No, I think you misunderstood what I said. Oh, I was really looking forward to donuts. Me too, Jip. <laughs> My goodness. So but, what do's and do nots then? Oh, well, the do's and do nots are kind of the, the how to and the what not of how to behave. Like mm -hmm. what Jesus wants us to do, what God wants us to do, and what he doesn't want us to do. That's the do's and do nots. Okay. I get it. Oh. Do you, you understand that, Jip? I think so. Okay. I wonder what do's and do nots Mindy had in mind. Well, I was thinking of 10 of them that are listed. Do you know what 10 are listed that we're supposed to remember? Um, oh, yeah, the 10 commandments, right? Oh. Whew. Yes, you were exactly right. Good. There's a big list of do's and do nots in there. So we're told things that we should do, like keep the Sabbath holy, to respect our parents, to not take God's name in vain and respect God, love God. And there's a lot of do nots, do not steal, do not hurt somebody else, you know, not to be jealous of others. Mm. Oh, I see, that's do's and do nots. Yeah. That makes sense. I still think I prefer do's and donuts though. Yeah, <laughs> well, I do too, in, in a way, Jip, but you know, um, the do's and do nots help us to enjoy the donuts a lot more because we can learn to share and learn uh, to be part of the same family, God's family. And the do's and do nots help us uh, think about how to be brothers and sisters with one another and how to be children of God, how to honor God. Um, and that shows in the way we share donuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of them to remember. I have a hard time remembering all 10. Yeah, I do too. I, I try to memorize. And, and Miss Mindy said we could even, you know, if we remembered all 10, we could get a little prize sometimes. But I wasn't very good at it. Yeah. Well, you know, you could keep working on that. Keep trying to memorize those 10 commandments in order. Um, and keep asking for bigger prizes from Miss <laughs> Mindy, right? But there's another like thought. Like donuts. I think people were, were concerned uh, in Jesus' day. They, they were also having trouble keeping it all straight. Uh, and not only the ten, but all the other commandments that kind of came out of the ten, all of the other rules and, and ideas and um, stories and traditions, they said, Jesus, we can't keep it straight. There's and do you know so what he many. said? Um, didn't he uh, just say two he did say two, and do you remember what they, they are? Yeah, um, we've done this before. Um, we have, and keep it simple. Um, don't, don't, you don't oh, have to overthink love it. Love God. Love God, right. That's the big one. Yeah. And love your neighbor, right? Yes, that's exactly right. How do we love our neighbor? Um, as ourself. Like, like, we, like we are supposed to love ourselves, mm -hmm. yeah. With respect and dignity and care, yeah. So of all the Ten Commandments and the many rules that came after and the other parts of the rules and the 
interpretations of the rules and the laws, the mm. do's and do nots. I think Jesus really summed it up nicely with those two commandments, the great commandment and the second, which was like the first. And in Romans, Paul is reminding them that that's all summed up in that. Love is the fulfillment of the law. And if you love somebody, you're going to treat them as you should. And that's the most important thing to remember. Even if you can't keep all 10 of the big ones straight or all the extra little ones that are thrown at us. Yeah. Think you could remember that one? Well, sure. Love rules all. Love rules all. Jip, um, you don't owe any dues, okay? So you keep your dues and you use that and put it in your college fund, all right? Um, but if you, if you scope out any donuts, please share them with me, okay? I will. All right. All right. Would Shall you like... Yeah. <laughs> should you pray? I would like <laughs> to pray. Should I? Okay. Can I pray, Jip? You want to follow or do you want me just to pray by myself? Or? I'll follow. Okay, great. Oh, God. Oh, God. We give you thanks for donuts. We give you thanks for donuts. And broccoli. I don't like broccoli. And broccoli. Oh, and broccoli. Yeah. Broccoli's good for us, God. <sighs> Broccoli's good for us, God. And you care for us. And you care for us. You give us the things we need. You give us the things we need. The sun and the water and the moon. The sun and the water and the moon. The day and the night. The day and night. Nine, ten commandments. Ten Commandments. And the greatest one of all is to love you. And the greatest one of all is to love you. Help us to keep it all straight. Help us to keep it all straight. To share our donuts. To share our donuts. And to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Hear our prayers of gratitude, O oh God. Hear our prayers of gratitude, O oh God. Amen. Amen. See you later, Pastor Matt. See you later, alligator. Maybe we'll share donuts soon. Okay. <laughs> I'll make Miss Mindy buy some. Good idea. Okay? Peace. <laughs> Peace. We are truly a blessed and um, wealthy congregation to have conversations like this. <laughs> I'm glad you're out there having them among uh, the people with whom you're sitting. Eric Corbin, Pastor Eric, will lead us through our morning offering. Friends, now we turn our hearts to a time of returning tithes and offerings to our God. Let us be glad in our Maker and rejoice in our King. Let us praise God's name with dancing and music. Let's bring to God our tithes and offerings. We may do so by mailing in a check to the church office or by giving securely online at giving. Let us give with grateful hearts. Now let us turn to our God in prayer. Ever-present God, just as Jesus promised to be among us when two or three gather in his name, be among us now that these offerings may become instruments of your love and justice. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our passage from uh, the epistle today is from chapter 13 of Romans. Mindy alluded to it a moment ago. Our call to worship was from chapter 12 of Romans. You'll hear that passage again. Our lectionary for the epistle is Romans chapter 13. We'll also be reading Matthew's gospel, a familiar passage in the 18th chapter of Matthew's gospel. And Blaise, of course, will be sharing with us the French translations of these passages. First from Romans chapter 13. Listen to the word of the Lord. Owe no one anything except to love one another. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. In our passage from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, a familiar passage to us. Listen. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen then, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, 
And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bonjour, mes frères et sœurs. Je suis très content d'être parmi vous. Aujourd'hui, nous allons lire dans le livre des Romains, chapitre 13, du 8e au 10e verset. Des voix envers les autres. Ne, ne devez rien à personne si ce n'est de vous aimer les uns les autres. Car celui qui aime les autres a accompli la loi. En effet, les commandements qui ne commettra pas d'adultère, qui ne commettra pas de, de meurtre, qui ne commettra pas de vol, qui ne portera pas de faux témoignages, qui ne convoitera pas, ainsi que les autres, se résume dans cette parole. Tu aimeras ton prochain comme toi-même. L'amour ne fait pas de mal au prochain. L'amour est donc l'accomplissement de la loi. Et nous allons aussi lire dans le livre de Matthieu, chapitre 18, du 15e au 20e verset. Si ton frère a péché, si s'il t'écoute, tu as gagné ton frère. Mais s'il ne t'écoute pas, prends avec toi une ou deux personnes afin que toute l'affaire se règle sur la, sur la déclaration de deux ou de trois témoins. S'il refuse de les écouter, dis-les à l'église. Et s'il refuse aussi d'écouter l'église, qu'il soit attesté comme le membre d'un autre peuple et le collecteur d'impôts. Je, je, je vous le dis en vérité. Tout ce que vous lirez sur la terre aura été lié au ciel. Et tout ce que vous, et tout ce que vous délirez sur la terre aura été délié au ciel. Je vous dis encore que si deux d'entre vous s'accordent sur la terre pour demander quoi que ce soit, cela, cela, cela leur sera accordé par mon Père Céleste. En effet, là où deux ou trois sont rassemblés, à mon nom, je suis au milieu d'eux. Amen. There is a game I often play with youth groups where I let them vote with their bodies and I ask them all kinds of uh, polarity kinds of questions. Left, right, uh, yes, no, black, white, uh, bright, dark. Um, so they stand in a room and I say, if you like pizza for dinner, stand over here against this wall for pizza. But if you'd prefer meatloaf, stand over on this wall for meatloaf. Go. And they divide. Usually they stand on the side of pizza. Surprisingly, some prefer meatloaf. And usually in this game, somewhere near the beginning, somebody asks, what if we don't like either one, either option? Or what if we like both options? Sometimes I'll al allow them to stand in the middle. Pizza, that's good. Or meatloaf, that's fine. Whichever is good for me. Sometimes I don't let them pick the middle. I make them make a choice. So I say broccoli or snow peas. I say you'd rather live in the mountains or you'd rather live by the sea. I say you like the Rolling Stones, you like the Beatles. And depending on the youth group, they say, huh? <laughs> Rolling Stones, Beatles? Well, what's that? They know Cubs and Cardinals. They know Dallas and Washington. Beatles, Rolling Stones, sometimes not so much. There's no right or wrong answer. There are simply different answers, different preferences. I learned this little exercise from um, Roy Oswald at the Alban Institute years ago as he used this, uh, this game to talk about managing conflict, to talk about managing our, our differences. Some, uh, sometimes the conflict that divides us can be resolved. Pizza, meatloaf, I don't like either one, but I'm grateful I'll have either for dinner. Uh, uh, but sometimes those polarities, those, those conflicts, those differences, they, they can't be solved. They can only be managed. Um, Democrat, Republican, uh, Protestant, Catholic. These are things that 
often seep into the DNA of us. They, they really do divide us. And as many Catholic friends as I have, they're not going to convince me to become Catholic, nor do I want to convince them to become Protestant. I simply want to be in relationship with them and learn from them and grow with them as brothers and sisters. But I'm not going to convince them to see things my way or to be Protestant, nor do I want them to be. I want them to claim their tradition. And they're not going to convince me to join their ranks either. You get it? That's a a polarity, that's a difference, a distinction between us that can't be solved, just has to be managed by adult people who love one another. And that's the key. So some people like pipe organs in worship, some people don't. Some people like pipe organs, some people prefer guitars and drums. Sometimes we can come together on that and say, well, you know, all instruments... Uh, uh, praise the Lord. This, the 150th Psalm pulls out every instrument known to humankind to praise the Lord. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. So organ and guitars and drums, they belong. We can, we can come to the center of that. For some of us, no, we can't. We just don't like organ music. We don't, don't like it at all. Or we don't, we don't like guitar music and drums and worship. That's a difference we have to manage. It's not a problem. It's just something we have to manage. In real life, these polarities, these differences can, well, take on an element that, that goes beyond just being a fun little game or a little exercise. This is an election year and polarities are often made more stark and distinct. And the chasm that divides us seems to grow wider and deeper and, and more dangerous because we have differences that separate us we're never really going to come together in the middle, so we have to manage the differences with respect and with love. But some of the rhetoric during every single election year causes us to fear that chasm and even to hate the person who holds a view different from our own. Some conflict can be resolved. Um, some conflict can be resolved. We can open our presents on Christmas Eve or on Christmas Day. We can figure that out. We can come to some, some mutual um, middle ground. Um, or we can have pizza and meatloaf or alternate. Some conflicts can be resolved. Other conflict really does need to be managed. It's not going to be easily resolved. We're not going to change anybody's mind. So... I'll always squeeze the toothpaste from the middle of the tube. And you, as frustrated by that as you may be, you're allowed to squeeze it from the end. But I'm always squeezing from the middle. I say neither, you say neither. We're not going to change each other on that. Um, I like grits and you never, ever, ever will. Those distinctions, those differences are okay. Though sometimes they're maddening and sometimes we make more of them than probably we should. Rachel and I have been watching episodes of The West Wing. Uh, I never saw that television show when it was on from um, 1999 to 2005 or so, seven seasons, but we are enjoying it now. And in episode two or season two, episode four, um, Ainsley Hayes, played by Emily Proctor, is a hotshot Republican commentator who takes uh, one of the president's um, um, advisors to lunch, just really makes him look bad on television uh, in a discussion about public education. President Josiah Bartlett, played by Martin Sheen, watches Ainsley on this TV news show and is impressed. He asks, who doesn't ask, he, he orders his uh, chief of staff, Leo McGarry, played by the late John Spencer, to hire her. And Leo says, why, sir? She's a Republican. She hates what you stand for. She doesn't agree with any of your policies. <laughs> why do you want me to hire her to work in the West Wing? And Josiah Bartlett says, because I like smart people who think differently than I do to be nearby. I like smart people who think differently than I do to be nearby. And so Leo hires Ainsley and she comes on board and she meets the kind of friction you would expect her to meet. They, they give her an office in the basement where the heater is. It's a terrible office. 
but they come pretty quickly to respect her keen intellect and her Republican love for the country. And so these Democrats and Republicans find a way to, to build space and respect for one another. And of course, as you might imagine, um, we see in West Wing how they are together able to serve with great compassion and intelligence this nation that they all love. Though Ainsley is often um, speaking out in ways that the status quo would prefer not to hear. In that way, the steel sharpens steel, right? They are better together. Uh, West Wing, season two, episode four. It's on Netflix. Most congregations have members and friends who um, represent many different points of view, many traditions, a lot of different life experiences. Ask around and you will find people in our church who think very differently than you or you think very differently than they. And, and together, these friends and members dive into the scriptures and out of the scripture, they often come to very different points of view. How is that? They've come from the same scripture. Doesn't scripture unite us? Well, sure, scripture does. But nevertheless, God has given us the freedom of, of a keen intellect and, and free will. And we often arrive at very different conclusions. Some conflict can be solved and some can only be managed. This illustrates, by the way, of course, that we're not the same, that we are different and distinct. And it should illustrate to us as well that no single one of us has a direct line on God's truth. The gospel writer Matthew understood this dynamic. He saw it uh, at play in the early church and was certainly influenced by other uh, writers and other Christians who were commenting on the, the Christian scene. And he knew that differences of opinion would create conflict. Conflict would create argument and argument would provide an opportunity for sin. And so here he underscores what Jesus says about how to handle a case of conflict when the conflict has become, uh, become big, become, become out of hand. If someone sins against you, talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, saying, you know, what you said I didn't like or I didn't understand or kind of hurt my feelings. I wonder if we can talk about it, just, just you and me. And if you can't reach a place of, of uh, togetherness, uh, and understanding and, and uh, peace doesn't mean you agree with one another. It just means you, you meet at a place of respect. If that doesn't work, then bring in a couple witnesses to join in the conversation so they can uh, listen and, and, and discern as well. If that doesn't work, Jesus says in Matthew's gospel, go to the wider church. <laughs> he says, if, if that doesn't work, then treat them like tax collectors and Gentiles. That's a backhanded slight if I've ever heard it. Jesus knew what he was saying. I think Jesus understood that when one deals directly and lovingly with one another, we are more likely than not to, to come together somehow, to agree, to disagree maybe. Now, the basis of this sort of methodology, I think, is easily based on those two commandments that Jip shared with us earlier. And Paul talks about them in the 13th chapter of Rome. Uh, he says, Owe no one anything except to love one another. Wow. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves one another has fulfilled the law. The law. That small thing. Do that and you fulfill the law. Here's what David Bartlett writes about the law. One reason law could be a burden in the first century as in the 21st is that law can multiply into laws almost endlessly. We can spend all day counting the ways our behavior might go wrong. In secular law, something as relatively short as the United States Constitution gets interpreted and reinterpreted with reams of laws and reams of decisions on the meanings of the law. Paul reverses the process, and this is David Bartlett writing. 
Paul reverses the process. The law is condensed from its extended permutation to something quite solid, palpable, and near. See that neighbor? Love him as yourself. Period. That's the law. Mark Twain said something like this, In all matters of opinion, our adversaries are insane. In all matters of opinion, our adversaries are insane. Sometimes we think that, don't we? I say potato, you say potato. That person's insane. The people who think differently than I think, they're insane. Mark Twain was joking. Unfortunately, some of the rancor that divides us is no joke at all. The person who holds a diametrically opposed point of view from ours is not insane. Instead, you all know this, that person is a child of God, a neighbor for whom we are, to whom, for whom, with whom we are called to love. It's not a suggestion, it's a commandment. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So that's one reason we can agree to disagree. And we can, di- we can disagree without being disagreeable, says uh, Johnny Underwood, an old friend of mine. We can disagree without being disagreeable, not because we have unity of opinion. No, we don't have unity of opinion. We can agree to disagree because we are grounded in the same truth, the same reality, the, the same hope, that we are children of God. See what love the Father would have for us, that we would be called children of God. And so we are, says First John. That's what unites us. That's why we can agree to disagree without being disagreeable. Not because we share opinions. Not because we have a power to persuade somebody to our point of view. Not because we have to cave in to their point of view. Not at all. But because we stand on the same ground. That is, we are God's beloved children. And we are called to love one another. Now notice we are not called to agree with one another. Notice that we're called not even to like one another. We're called to love one another. And that requires a certain ethic from us. It requires a kind of behavior from us, a kind of respect from us for other people. Hmm. You know, in another sermon, we can talk about how we can come together and how we can grow towards consensus uh, sometimes. Paul would say, You have the mind of Jesus the Christ. All of us have the mind of Jesus Christ. That's that's another sermon. The basis for that sermon, though, is this sermon, that we are called to love one another as God has loved us. Okay. So love's at at the center. The person who has that other point of view, that insane person who has the other point of view, that person is our brother or our sister. And perhaps our teacher. We're called to love them. Not to cave into their point of view. Not to be a missionary and change their point of view. We're called to love them and respect them and honor them. So as the church, you know, the church has consistently been divided by controversy from the very founding of the church. And increasingly the church continues to sliver and divide and splinter. Is that what we're called to do when we find enough people on the other side of some issue? We're just going to form our own church. We're going we're to build an echo chamber for like-sounding voices so we never have to hear this voice over here. We're just going to cut them off. And we're going to have our own place. That's one answer, and that's, a, that's an answer the church universal has leaned on way too much in its history, if you ask me. It's not the answer I want, and it's certainly not the answer I think that God is calling us to. God calls us to unity. You know, Jesus the Christ, he lived and he died so that we should love one another as neighbor. That was his message. So I say, let's keep loving one another, especially those people who are hard for us to love. Let's keep loving one another In the name of the one who offered us the bread, saying, this is my body, broken, given for you. Let's continue to love one another in the name of the one 
who in our deep thirst offers us the cup and says, this cup is the new covenant. It's the new law and it's sealed in my blood, which is shed for you. New covenant, new law. That law is love. As with all sermons, friends, it's a lot easier to preach them than to live them. So blessings upon you as together we try to live what God has in mind for us. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from north and south and east and west to sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread and broke it and blessed it and he gave it to them. And they ate and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. And so our Savior invites those who trust in him to come and eat the meal he has prepared. Let us pray together and help me sing into this prayer. You'll see a slide in a moment um, with a familiar uh, phrase of a, a great hymn. Let us pray together. For the fruit of all creation, thanks be to God. For the gifts to every nation, thanks be to God. For the wonders that astound us, for the truths that still confound us, most of all that love has found us, thanks be to God. Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of creation and especially the gift of our life. O oh God, make us stewards of this gift as we take care of ourselves and take care of our world uh, in the capacity of your great love. We're grateful that you have made us in your image, holy God, and that you pardon us when we act as though you have no authority over our lives. We are grateful that you sustain us in your great compassionate love. And so with your people, with angels, archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we praise and magnify your glorious name, joining our voices in the eternal hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy and blessed, and holy and blessed is your Son, Jesus the Christ, who was born of Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of the life that we know. You anointed this Christ with your spirit to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to give sight to the blind, and to liberate the oppressed, proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. In Jesus' baptism, his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, you, O holy God, gave birth to your church and made a new covenant with us by water and by spirit. Remembering the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying, his rising, and we await again the day of his coming, proclaiming the mystery of faith. O God, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we ask that you would open our hearts by that power. Uh, You are the giver of light and life, Impart to us thoughts higher than our own thoughts and prayers better than our own prayers and powers beyond our own powers that we may spend and be spent in the ways of love and goodness after the perfect image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ and we pray together using the prayer he taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the the glory glory forever. forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took the bread, and after giving thanks to God, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. In a similar way, after supper, he took the cup and he said, This cup is the new covenant. It is sealed in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. All of you, he said, drink of it. And every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. Join with us. I hope you have prepared from your home some bread and some juice or wine. Matt, it's the body of Christ broken for you. Thanks be to God. And also for you. Thank you. The cup of salvation. Thanks be to God. Cup of the vine poured out for you. And now let us pray together. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is a very familiar one, God Be With You Till We Meet Again. Let's sing all the verses of this song. God be with you till we meet again. Loving counsels guide uphold you. With a shepherd's care enfold you. God be with you till we meet again. God. 
God be with you till we meet again. Unseen wings protecting, hide you. Daily manna still provide you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils thick confound you, put unfailing arms around you. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Keep love's power floating o'er you. Smite death's threatening way before you. God be with you till we meet again. Friends, listen to these words from our benediction. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. Do not, overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Friends, uh, let's leave this place of worship wherever you are, your bedroom or your breakfast nook or, or out on the park bench somewhere with your phone. But let's not stay in one place. The church is moving and growing. Go and attempt to live the things we've talked about today, the scripture we've, we've ingested, this holy grace that we've taken in. We've not taken it in just for our growth. We're meant to give it all away. So love the world in God's holy name until you have no love left. And then just wait and watch to see how God will fill you and me and us up again with even more love to share. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Thank you.